Hello and welcome to How to Heal. I am your host, Mika Leon Pettit, and you are listening to Stephen Halpern. This is off of his Deep Theta soundtrack. It's number three. You can find more of Stephen's music on his YouTube channel, Stephen Halpern, or directly on his website, and that's Stephen Halpern music.com Steven is actually my sound mentor and um, I am doing my dissertation around sound and psychology and I'm going to be referencing a couple of Steven's book Tuning the Human Instrument and Sound Health and you can find out more about that as well on Steven's website on stephenhalpern.com. So sound healing may sound new to some, but the ancient ancestors were doing it long before writing and language. And so, Stephen has been healing with sound for since the 60s. And I'm very happy to have him as a mentor. So in episode one, I gave you some of my background how the show will be formatted, and some of the basics of energetics. Energy, of course, is at the core of all creation and all that we are. So how do we keep our energy clear in the present and at the highest quality? And that's by building a daily practice. We're going to discuss a few of my favorites today and some you will be able to begin immediately at no cost except your time and your willingness to put it into work to see the results. You have to be ready to commit on several levels to do this kind of work. But if you do, I promise you, you will not only see results, um, but want to continue because of what you're experiencing and how better the quality of your life is. And for many if not most of us, that's what we are truly striving for, a quality of life that we are happy to engage with every day. I have a great beginner's course on Udemy called uh, Energetics, the key to creating your ideal life. And I will be going over a few of my favorite energy practices that I've included in that course. Speaking of energies, this show is being aired doing new moon in Taurus and our sun of course right now is in Taurus as well are you feeling the pressure of creating structure in your life now or to make some ideas or projects that you've been thinking about or working on more physical or more tangible I have been feeling it for a few days and I have to say it's been very helpful with my organizing The need to grow more and feel good in my body has also been coming up for me as well. So you probably hear me connect things that I talk about here. And they're to the energies of the cosmos, planets, and the vibration of the earth. Because this is a way to heal. A way to heal and reconnect with our surroundings, our environment, and the trauma of just being born into a world that takes us out of alignment with nature as soon as we're in it, which sets us up for a vicious cycle of imbalance early on in life. So just think about this. We are on a a planet floating out in a galaxy that belongs to a big, huge universe that is among many universes. These massive bodies planets hold so much ancient knowledge they shower upon us when i keep a connection or awareness with those energies my life goes smoother i'm more on point in life and happier so this energetics at its core and we want to be in alignment to really make things happen in our lives We want integration with all aspects of being human. So if astrologer Rick Levine said in one of his interviews, 
Mother Nature doesn't like it when you mess with her. My saying is, you can't fool the universe. So I believe this is why uh, people get frustrated about energetic practices. Um, because they want the magic, but you have to put in the effort to get that magic. You have to energetically participate in your growth because the universe knows if you've tapped in or not. It's unlimited intelligence and wisdom. You cannot fool the universe, um, divine, God, or whichever term sounds you know right for you. This intelligence will know if you're in alignment or if you're faking it. So that's why when you use you know things like manipulation instead of work on your self development, things don't quite go the way you planned. It actually usually has the opposite effect. And if you do get something similar to what you expected, since you did not get it being in alignment with the best possibilities and outcomes for all involved, it comes in all kinds of challenges or complications you were not expecting. So, pause. <laughs> <clears throat> and think about if you can relate. Most of us can. These practices are going to start to help clear all the unhealthy patterns that has accumulated in your auric field. This will trickle into your environment. Now, with that being said, the clearing is by no means easy, but it's definitely worth it. So most of us <laughs> live our lives in a tolerable state of stress, like a static undertone that's always there. Think of this stress as a signal, regardless of how subtle, is broadcasting from you at least 16 hours a day. If your vibrations attract like vibrations, what kind of frequencies are you picking up on on a regular basis? So imagine looking at your body as an instrument that tunes into and sends signals to its environment. You want to be cautious and conscious of the vibrations, sounds, or the overall feeling of your environment at all times. Because those vibrations are sending out or emitting frequencies that causes situations that vibrate at those frequencies. Just like when an energy in a certain place is strong and you either want to be in that place and you just feel good or it causes the opposite effect and you can't get out of it fast enough. There will be another episode um, as well where we specifically go into um, energy in the spaces of our environments that we spend the most time in. So um, if you decide to take this mission, you would need to be prepared to trigger those in your immediate environment. If these people are not on a path of growth and development, a couple of reactions are probably going to happen. They are intrigued by your new energy, want to be around you more, want to learn more about you and what you're doing with your life. And this could come in several forms, too, as well. They want to be around you a lot, and they don't know why. They just like you, love you, or just plain infatuated with you, too. That can happen. You're different somehow, in a different way they can't quite put their finger on, but they want to know more. That's another way. <clears throat> Your new vibes also can draw energy vampires. Use yourself there, creating and flowing all this great energy. So you believe that what will come to you, that's what's going to come to you is good energy. But not always. Um, people of who can't create their own sweet vibes are very attuned to where they can get their next shot or fix of these sweet vibes. So a lot of times in these situations, you have to distance yourself from these kinds of people or they will drain you. Even if it's a family member and you feel obligated to spend time with them, limit it as much as possible. 
When you have energy vampires in your life, once you cut back the time you spend with them, you'll be surprised how much happier you are and the more energy you have for things that you really want to create and experience in your life. Usually if you cut off the energy vampire supply, they'll go look for it someplace else and to feed on. This can be very confusing for people that get entwined with energy vampires or narcissistic parasitic type vibrations uh, that can manifest when we are immersed in uh, energy toxicity. So this brings us into a whole other topic for another episode. So I'll definitely be going into that and a few psychology episodes uh, in the fall and probably the winter. It's part of my studies um, and one of my friends and mentor, Noel Eastwood, uh, he's a psychologist who has corp- incorporated um, tarot and astrology in his practice. He no longer uh, sees private clients, but uh, his work is great in the form of newsletters, books, classes. He has a YouTube channel as well, and they are just as transformative, if not more. Um, so he has books like, uh, one of his books is called The Psychological Astrology and the 12 houses uh the fool for those who are in tarot and know what the, about the fool's journey uh through the tarot uh he has books on the major arcana and all the suits astrology of health is another book of his uh and self-hypnosis to tame your inner dragons and which i i really enjoy as well and these are just some of Noel's books that you can find you can either go to his website directly at Pluto's Cave, and yes, that's P L U T O C A V E, Pluto's Cave.com. And you also can check out his YouTube station to get some information and a little taste of Noel. Um, and his YouTube channel is also named Pluto's Cave. This is a good time to take a break, and we will be right back. We are all here to do something specific and unique to our original blueprint. Soul contracts can clear up questions you have about yourself and others while putting you on the path that is uniquely yours. It speeds up the work of self-development exponentially and gives you practical tools for daily living. To learn more about or experience a soul contract reading, go to MikaLeone.com. That's www.MikaLeone, M-I-K-A-L-E-O-N-E.com. And get your free 15-minute consult to find out if a soul contract is right for you. Welcome back. So now we have discussed some of the issues or challenges of vibing high where you're magnet for all kinds of strange and wonderful things. That brings us to some of my favorite energetic practices. And we're going to talk about a few of those here. Now what I suggest is try one at first or maybe even a couple, and see how they work out for you, and incorporate more as you go along, as you feel needed, and have, after you've already implemented and added the ones that you enjoy into your routine. I would suggest that you'd probably want to give yourself um, at least a month of trying it on a regular basis um, to see if it clicks. And if it fits and it works with your lifestyle. One of the things that have dramatically changed my life over the years um, is when I seriously got into Reiki. And there's different types of Reiki. I did take Yusuri, which uses symbols, 
but I truly got um, really, really involved with it and started to just love it after I started taking a Reiki called Reiki Tomo. It's very focused on um, working on the heart center and it does things with smiling and letting go that allows you to open up faster. I took meditation classes with this as well and combined it with meditation teachings that I was already doing and it amplified it. So I would say the both together. I got into both um, together at the same time. With Reiki Tomo, you don't need symbols and you are just channeling in universal creator energy. Um, releasing and letting it go through your body and channeling it back out. This is one of the things I did at um, the healing clinic down in Los Angeles when we had the monthly uh, Reiki clinics. It was with this type of healing. I would even look online and see if you can find something that would work for you. Um, it's definitely worth it. And it clears out a lot of things out of your auric and energy field that is um, definitely um, help not helping to keep you in alignment with um, what you need to move forward and be happy and successful in your life. And we all need clearing at times. We all can use um, things that are going to keep us because we also have energies around us on a regular basis that is constantly working to keep us out of alignment. Just being on our computers and doing the things that we're doing with electronics, it has its benefits for sure, um, but it also, we have to balance that out with earthly things and things that put us back into balance with nature. And Reiki is one of those things um, that does that. And um, it led me into being able to focus on my meditation more instead of being um, in my head so much, especially for those people um, like me that are very heady, um, like to think a lot, and it's hard for you to feel and be in your body. Uh, it helps to bring you back to that state where you enjoy being in your body, which makes it easier for you to be able to do meditation and let that flow go through you. Um, it's actually quite amazing, especially once you start doing it on a regular basis. Um, and another scientific fact that you may not know about Reiki is that usually um, a basic Reiki session, it's about tw 12 gigahertz of um, energy running through the hands at the time of the session. Now, of course, you want to make sure that your practitioners are constantly clearing their own energies so that when they're channeling, they're, they're clearly channeling and facilitating uh, clear energy from the universe to you that is not overglazed um, with energies from them from the day before or you want to make sure that, it, that they're constantly clearing so that they can give you the clearest energy possible. Um, with meditation, what you want to do is try to slow your breathing down to at no more than six breaths a minute. And then, usually you can get it down to four, but six is a good start. And then what you do is focus on where that breath is moving along in the body. And it's okay to let your body naturally move a little bit when you are in your posture or position to meditate. And I suggest as long as you feel comfortable in the space, whether you need to lay down, whether you need to sit up. And actually, I just recommended to someone to try meditating um, before they get out of bed in the morning. And this was also taught to me by my mentor. Noel that I mentioned earlier that he does this as well before getting out of bed in the morning and she's struggling with being able to get focused from her day and she actually mentioned to me today that uh, she thought that it was uh, very helpful to her so um, 
even after one time doing it in the morning, she found that, that she felt a little more centered, a little more focused. And I know it's only going to get better as she goes along. So um, definitely worth uh, getting in practice and doing, even if it's just for 10 to 15 minutes a day. You're going to feel a lot better. That leads me into another one of my favorite energetic practices, which is called, I call it grounding. Um, some people call it earthing as well. And it's when you take and you put your body, it doesn't have to be your feet. It could be your hands, touching trees, touching the ground, your feet in contact with the ground, um, sand, grass, of course, um, the, the natural ground. Um, because uh, what you find is, especially in today's world, most of our shoes are um, made with soles that do not allow us to get the natural flow of energy that we would normally be in contact with in nature to help us stay healthy. Um, we're usually disconnected from that, whether we're in the house or whether we're walking outside because of the soles of our shoes. So when you ground and you actually go out there and make a conscious effort to make contact and communication um, with the nature and the environment, that naturally brings you back into a level of alignment energetically with the earth, the earth energies. It helps the bodies in ways of like inflammation, sleeping better, and you can also get grounding mats to put in your bed um, as another way uh, method to get those energies back into your life. And I found that just being on the computers and having the high tech world that we have now, it's always good to get outside as much as possible and uh, take and neutralize some of those energies for sure. Another thing that I like to do um, along with uh, the meditation, the grounding, and uh, Reiki is breath work. Uh, most of us already are shallow breathers um, just by uh, environmental, um, unless we consciously make an effort to be a, a deep conscious breather. Meditation, usually you get practices that give you breath work before and during meditation. Or if you're doing yoga, usually you will get pranayama um, breath work um, in your routine with yoga as well. But you can still do it outside of classes or if you're not a yogi or even if you're not meditating, focus, keep your breath uh, and keep your breath um, full and move it throughout your body um, to give your body more awareness and to also keep you in the present. Um, energetically, you want to be in the present as much as possible, not in the past and not in the future. You And breathing and knowing where your breath is and making those full breaths will keep you um, in the conscious present moment. Uh, I also do um, treatments on my water. Even if I, I usually try to keep it in glass, I can't always get it in glass, but I try to get my water in glass as much as possible, and then I charge it with um, things like crystals. I, I tune it with sound healing, and I will also make sure I try to alkalize it as much as possible as well. And I like to send healthy words. Um, you probably have heard of um, Dr. Emoto um, with uh, messages of water and sending vibrations throughout your water and how that can make your water better. Um, saying positive things to your water, giving your water um, bottle or container labels with positive words, amplifies and charges it. And he's proven this in different scientific uh, studies on the shape of the water molecules when they hear um, positive things and then when they hear um, not so positive things. It's actually pretty amazing. So I, I highly suggest it. Um, 
and I use a lot of plant medicine for energetic vibrations and I use them in several different ways. I use uh, essential oils and I use those essential oils by diffusing them I and I use them um, on my body. I use them internally and of course you have to be very careful and make sure that you get therapeutic grade oils that are, are designed to be ingested internally spraying them throughout the room but they have a very high frequency and they can shift your emotions they can do many things um, to your body a lot of oils have very um, a lot of different qualities that can be used so one oil can do several different things to keep you healthy and that's what I love about the plants you can also take it um, if you're not comfortable taking the essential oils internally you can also go the route of taking the herbs and do herbal extracts and herbal teas. And that's another way that I keep that vibration of plant medicine in my life and in my body. And we actually will be talking with some of them on the show, talking about the energy of plant medicine and how they got into it and how they're helping others with it. Also, I have to do flower essences. Flower essences usually go with the actual flowers, and a lot of them are, and, and there are different methods that people use to make flower essences. Um, I've made it in the class doing flowers in pure water, outside, in the sun. It collects the vibrations off of the plant petals and the, and the flowers, and it imprints it in the water. And that's your mother, and then you can take and make a lot of little bottles from that um, mother base. And it's very um, subtle, but very healing. And what I love about um, these flower essences, the essential oils, and even the herbs, is that you can take them, and then all of a sudden, they, they just work whatever you were taking them from, you just notice that, oh, I don't need it anymore. <laughs> so, so they're very, very great. And they're like food to our bodies too. So they naturally have a symbiosis or a, a, a relationship that is naturally flowing and our bodies can instantly understand and communicate with. So I also, one of my other favorites I want to get to before and 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 we'll go into more later and we'll go into more in other interviews and other shows but another thing that I love 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 is uh, sound healing for vibrations I use frequencies different types of frequencies for different types of things um, it could be um, crystal bowls with different um, a b c tones um, that resonate with different parts of my body or chakras um, or it can be ones that are to help balance the left and the right hemispheres of the brain and I love using tuning forks um, I've been using them consistently now for a little over three or close to three years and um, before that I would just use them off and on but I do notice now when I don't use them and I like to use them in my classes. So I've done um, the recent plant medicine class. I did a little tune-in prior to us doing the panel and, and doing the questions and answer session of the panel. Um, I did a session. And then I like to do them in class to, um, to bring everybody into center. So I did it. So I, I love these forks because with sound medicine for one the forks are easy to take around especially if you travel a lot and I like to travel so they're easier to take around than a crystal bowl or um, a bigger instrument like a gong or a didgeridoo or things like that um, also to these forks the the sound that comes from them and it's even the sounds from the frequencies, whether you're listening to them on a computer or if you are just, um, if you're doing them alone at home. Sound resonates through you. It's 
and thank you so much for joining me today. And I would love to hear your results with some of the energy techniques that I've mentioned. Did you try one? Did you try a couple? Um, how did they make you feel? And um, any feedback, anything that you incorporated that I didn't um, include in this episode? I would love to hear more. So I am going to end the show with more Stephen. And I will see you on the next time on How to Heal. Bye for now.